morning guys so this is low of the polished edge again now what I have here today it's upside down is a Miyabi kitchen knife now there are a few different uh, series for Miyabis and this one is the black series if I'm not mistaken but the special thing about it is that it comes in a steel called MC66 now MC66 is also known as ZDP189 and it is known for a very high hardness type of steel uh, characteristic wise it is a little bit more prone to rusting than other types of stainless steels and they tend to be a little bit chippy because of how hard it is but that characteristic also lends to the fact that it holds its edge for a really long time it's got a very aggressive edge and if you sharpen it properly it gets ridiculously sharp which is why I love it. so anyway uh, the edge is actually really dull right now there are chips in it I'll try and slice with it Right, so it's just tearing <laughs> into the mountain range there. So there's some chips in it, it's really really dull. There's some rust spots and the spine is wrong. Now the spine is crowned, so I think what I'll do is it's crowned except the tip. <laughs> Can't see that. But uh, I think what I'll do is I'll extend the crowning to the very front just to make it a little bit more uniform and to remove that rust spot. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to de-stress the edge. I'm going to remove the edge entirely. I'll remove the chip as well as old fatigue steel and I'll put on a new bevel onto it. Then we will finish it by hand using Japanese water stones. I think that's pretty suitable, right? Japanese knife, Japanese water stones. Yeah. deburring pass on, on the belt from one side to the other and uh, there is still a little bit of a burr here if I drop it of course we get nice performance but let's just try it out let's drop some here all right so this is okay uh, we haven't fully maximized uh, or realized the potential of MC66 yet this is all right this is okay, some people will be happy with it, some won't, I'm not. So this is just a start, we just gave it a profile. Next what we're going to do, we're going to tape it up and we will hand sharpen it. So you saw that I put my hand on the belt at the beginning of this uh, grinding video. That is just to show you how slow it is. And of course I put water on there to prevent the blade from overheating. Uh, now when I tape this up, and I always tape up my blades if I'm going to hand sharpen them, because when you put them on the table or on the clamp, the abrasive liquid or the slurry can actually get in between whatever is holding the blade and the blade itself. And a little bit of movement, you always have a little bit of movement, will start to scratch up and mar the blade. Uh, we don't want that to happen. Now the thing about Miyabi knives is this. See the nice little logo there? If I put tape on that and I open it up, that logo is gonna come out. Okay, at least that's what happens uh, on the older Miyabis. I'm not sure about the new ones, but they look like they're painted on. I'm not gonna take a risk either way. I'm gonna cover this up before I tape it down. Okay, cover it with paper, tape over it. Uh, it's gonna hold here, here, and here, so it's just to protect the logo. Uh, from my experience, generally on this side, you don't get too much of the, the markings coming up, but I'm gonna cover up this side as well, just in case.
finished hand sharpening this. Yep, there we go. It's reflecting pretty well. Probably take a better picture where we can see the definitions in the words. So after we profiled it in the machine, we removed whatever chips that were on it. I kind of fixed the tip because I thought it was a little bit off. So I reprofiled that as well. Uh, we put in kind of like a crowning at the back. Of course, you all know I use the Jenny Jigs system. Uh, it's pictured elsewhere. But I'm just going to talk about the stones for a bit. Now, the first stone that I started off with is the Naniwa 1K chocolate bar. These are all from Jendi. I get all my stones from Jendi. And the reason I use this and not something coarser is because I didn't want deep scratch patterns on the blade. I didn't want to start off with deep scratch patterns on the blade. So it did take a little bit longer, but a little bit less refinement towards the end, and a little less obvious scratches um, at the end product. After the 1K, I used the 3K. This is the Tracera 3K, again from Jendi. So it's already a fine stone. If you sharpen on it long enough, you're actually gonna get uh, kind of like a mirror. Maybe a little bit hazy, and that's where the 10K comes in, but the 3K already gives you a pretty nice edge. Okay, and because we started on the 1K, it wasn't too difficult to remove the scratch patterns from the 1K with the 3K, all right, because we did start with something really coarse. Okay, so at the end of the day, you kind of save a little bit of time uh, on refinement uh, versus the initial bevel setting. So we finished on the 10K stone, this is Tristara 10K. Okay, this thing is really smooth. Now, whatever small scratches that you get on the 3K, a bit of a hazy finish, uh, this will kind of get rid of most of it. Then we moved on to straps. Now, I started out with the 12 micron diamond emulsion. This is the Gen D Ultra Max, uh, meaning it's got like double concentration of diamonds. Now, the question is this 10K is about one microns. So a lot of people will ask, why would you go up to 12 microns, right? Aren't you regressing? The thing that you have to understand is strops cut very differently compared to stones. Stones cut pretty clearly, all right? The thing about strops are because, you know, they're kind of fluid, they do blend away the scratch patterns, all right? So if you were to see a hard scratch, using a strop, uh, a coarser compound strop will start to melt it away, all right? Instead of being a hard scratch. So I started off with the 12 micron, which got rid of a lot of those scratches, but the edge uh, became a little bit hazier. And we used the 8 micron. This is another Ultramax, the Genji Ultramax. So this refined that, that shined it up even more. And after that, I jumped, because I still want some aggression in the edge, it is a kitchen knife after all. Uh, we jumped to the 0.25 micron. I think this is like 60,000 grits. Yeah, so it's all right, that's too small. But I finished on the 0.25 microns and I called it a day. At the end of that, it was a phenomenal shine. I mean, like looking at it right now, normally what I do is I try to look for scratch patterns and you have to try hard in order to actually see it. But there you go, uh, very nice mirror. I do like it a lot. Again, CDP was just, this, is, this was just a dream to sharpen. It just sounds so clean, feels so clean, feels so smooth. Yeah. Right, so uh, we did a bit of a feat of sharpening or a feat of sharpness. Uh, I had four rolls of magazine paper. Now magazine paper is really slippery because it's kind of waxy on the outside. So it's actually harder to cut. And uh, I rolled I rolled up four and lined it up and just took one swing. We have it on slow motion. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was informative. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe for more future content. Do share this with your friends, you know, if you've got knife nut friends or if you've got chefs who would benefit from using a knife this sharp or having their tools in good condition. Yep, they can come and find me. Anyways, I will catch you guys in the next video. Stay safe, stay sharp.